Well, hello from Real Relationships. We are celebrating love, and this week we are celebrating the wedding of Robbie and Julia uh, uh, in 1998's The Wedding Singer. So I thought it would be interesting to look at wedding traditions from around the world. Now, of course, here in America, we have the tradition of something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue. Let's see how other countries celebrate weddings. In Norway, brides wear a crown around their head made of gold and silver with little trinkets attached to it so that when they move, it kind of jingles and jangles, and that noise is said to ward off evil spirits. In Mexico, they do a wedding lasso, and during the ceremony, as the couple is getting married, a lasso made of rosary beads and flowers is draped around the couple in the shape of a figure eight, and not only does El Lazo represent the union between the couple, it also symbolizes their eternal love for each other. And I absolutely love that. So in Scotland, a tradition of eloping has become popular because centuries ago, England restricted marriages to only those 21 and over, but that did not stop young lovers from finding a loophole. And in this case, Gretna Green provided such a loophole and allowed couples to elope pretty much regardless of age. So even today, that tradition of couples in Scotland eloping in Gretna Green is still popular. In Guatemala, the tradition of breaking a bell is still popular. And as wedding reception hosts, the groom's family can pretty much do whatever they want, including smashing things. Now, this is not a tradition that began in the grunge era, but it instead is a centuries long tradition. And when the newlyweds arrive at the reception, tradition says that the groom's mom breaks a white ceramic bell filled with grains such as rice, and this is said to bring prosperity to the newlywed couple. And going back to Norway, so they ditch the traditional white wedding cake that is found at many American weddings. What they do is serve what is called a kronskek. I might be saying that wrong, please let me know. But this cake is made with ice almond rings and it forms a cone and in the hollowed out center is a wine bottle and that is a tradition i can certainly get behind in the philippines they release white doves one male one female symbolizing the union of the bride and groom and again this is supposed to bring the newlyweds prosperity and happiness for many years to come. In Cuba, they perform the money dance, and it is Cuban tradition that if a gentleman wants to dance with the bride, he is to attach a, um, a bill to her dress, and this money is supposed to help the newlyweds start their life together. And this is a tradition that I think is just absolutely beautiful. In Wales, they add myrtle to the bridal bouquet, and they don't just add myrtle, but because myrtle is an herb that symbolizes love, what the bride does is divide her bridal bouquet among her party so that her bridesmaids can share in her happiness and prosperity. Again, I, I, I think that's gorgeous. In Peru, they do what is called a cake pull. And in Peruvian weddings, a cake is typically assembled with ribbons throughout, and these ribbons are attached to charms, one of which is a fake wedding ring. So during the reception, all of the single women have a pull at the cake, and the woman who pulls the fake wedding ring is said to be the next to get married. And we're back again in Wales where the groom makes love spoons. 
So back in the day when a Welshman fell in love with his betrothed and was ready to commit, he carved spoons from wood called love spoons and gave them to his beloved. And often these would be in the shape of a key as though he's giving her the key to his heart or beads and these symbolize the number of children they hoped to have. In Italy, there is a ceremony called La Serenata that the groom performs the night before the wedding. As tradition states, the groom is to hold a surprise party outside of the window of his fiance. La Serenata begins with the groom uh, backed by musicians singing to his beloved and they are soon joined by their friends for a late night feast. In Spain, they have a tradition wherein they cut the groom's tie, and this was not stolen from the office, either the American version or the British version, but at some Spanish weddings, it is traditional for the groom's friend to cut up the groom's tie and sell pieces of the tie to guests, and that money is used, again, to help the newlyweds start their life together. And in Canada, um, there is another type of money dance that is performed, at many French Canadian ceremonies, the groom's older unmarried siblings will perform a dance while wearing wacky, mismatched, brightly colored socks. As they dance, guests throw money at them and then it is then collected and given to the newlyweds again to help them in their new life together. So there you have it. There are so many ways to celebrate your union. What's your favorite tradition? Is there something that I left out? Let me know in the comments. And as always, you can find new episodes of the Real Relationships podcast every Thursday. And I'll tell you what, why don't you make a commitment to the subscribe button so that you never miss any episodes or any Real Relationships-based wackiness. From Courtney and me, we both appreciate you. We appreciate your listenership and support. And keep listening. Thanks.